It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us, folks. Uh, today, uh, I'd like to give you some information uh, on what's happening in the country. Uh, we'd like to keep you informed. Uh, once again, I'm going to say this at the beginning of the show. Anything that's discussed today, if you feel you have some comments you'd like to make, um, be more than happy for you to um, email me at sam at ssptv.com. Um, today, I have former Congressman Lou Barletta. Now, Lou Barletta um, spends a lot of personal time with President Donald Trump. But before he, uh, Donald Trump became president, he was a staunch supporter of uh, Donald Trump. I didn't know that much about Donald Trump until I started realizing what he would be able to bring to the country. Uh, unfortunately, there are some people that don't like him. Uh, and um, that's okay, but it's gone to really, really um, extreme uh, efforts here. Today is June 5th. We're taping the show June 5th. We'll be playing the show probably better part of June. Today, June 5th, the Drudge Report. A poll shock. This is a poll shock, folks. Americans view fake news as a bigger problem than terrorism. Could you believe that? Fake news, that's how much the media is destroying this country. Uh, that's Pew Research. Now, I say that. I'm in the media, and I'm embarrassed to say that because what the media has done is, is actually disgraceful. Well, to give you an example, uh, CNN's ratings dropping all the time, 16% in the first quarter, MSNBC dropping all the, all the time. So what are, what's really happening, folks? What, what is really going on? So, uh, Congressman, thanks for coming on the show again. Good, good to be here, Sammy. Um, <clears throat> you know the president very well. You've been in his Air Force plane, Air Force One. You've been in his private company. You watched the Super Bowl with him. You, you, know, you were down in Trump Towers, etc. And, okay, so now he wins, and they didn't expect him to win because they wanted you know, Hillary to win. All right, when you sat there, okay, for, you know, what did you see internally happening? And in, in, instead of this trying to solve um, welfare or uh, health care and, and move the country on, we're, we're bogged down for two and a half years on really political nonsense. Yeah. So, what, so what I saw, Sam, and, and one of the reasons that I, I um, endorsed Donald Trump versus the other 17 Republicans that were running is I wanted an outsider. Uh, however, what I found when I got to Washington is Washington will fight. It's the culture there is to keep outsiders out. They don't want people to see behind the curtains. They don't want to see uh, somebody come in who's not connected and doesn't play the political games that, that, that go on here. And I, I got an opportunity to see it firsthand. I saw it even, though it, even you know, I'm not excluding any party, both parties. Uh, so, so what happened is nobody believed that Donald Trump ever had a chance to win. There's no way an outsider such as himself with no political, never ran for school board, could ever, could ever win. Uh, they were convinced, as well as the national media, that Hillary Clinton was going to be the next president. And this would be a continuation of, of uh, Barack Obama's presidency and, and the policies that were really driving our economy uh, down the drain. Uh, and after Donald Trump surprised everyone, if you remember, they were shocked that election night, especially when you know, Pennsylvania won. They, they, they couldn't even get themselves to, a, to declare him the winner here in Pennsylvania. Well, they have never given up on the fact that they did not win on election night, but they were going to do something else to get rid of him. Regardless of the fact that, the, that, that this was the American people who voted for him, whether you like him or not, I, I wasn't a fan of President Barack Obama, but he was my president. I, I didn't like his policies, I didn't believe his policies, but I tried to work because he's our president. And this Democrat Party, every day they go to work in Washington to do something to try to get rid of Donald Trump. No infrastructure, no health care, no fixing our health care, uh, no f securing our borders, all the issues that the American people want fixed. And what you just said to open uh, is, is the fact that this has become such a problem to the American people that they cannot believe the media any longer, that that is their number one problem. Where do they go for the truth? The media is supposed to hold politicians accountable. Now they have given politicians in Washington a free pass to lie to the American people, and the people feel betrayed. Uh, uh, we had this Mueller report, and I'm all for this. I mean, if you do something wrong, 
if you like Nixon, etc., they got caught. Then you deserve to pay the pay the piper here. But two and a half years, this has been going on. Okay, uh, and you, how much did it cost? Twenty-five million dollars. So twenty-five million dollars it's cost so far. All right, now, so what? It, what was your opinion if you sat in Congress today? Uh, because you, you know, you had the experience, you had seniority. What would be your opinion of the Mueller report when, when they made the report? Well, I think it opened up a Pandora's box because after, I mean, we all said, what, is, what could be taking so long? The whole idea of the report was to find whether he colluded, President Trump colluded with the Russians to fix the election. So the question is now is when did Mueller and, and, and the special counsel know that he did not collude? And why did the investigation then go from there into what President Trump called a witch hunt? until they were trying to find something. Uh, and at the end of two and a half years, they couldn't find anything. They found no collusion, no conspiracy, no obstruction, no crime. But yet Mueller, still on his way out, threw a carrot to the Democrats in Congress to give them an opportunity by saying, well, we're not saying he didn't commit a crime. Well, in America, there's the presumption of innocence. It's, it's, you don't have to prove yourself innocent, Sam. As an American, we are innocent until our justice proves us guilty. They could not prove he was guilty, so there he is presumed innocent. That's the right that we have as Americans. So now what you're seeing is more money, taxpayer money spent. All these committees, all they're doing is using staff members, tax dollars, to try to find something to impeach this president. In this report today that I read to you in the office, um, it says the Americans are they feel that this fake news is hurting Americans. And it's, and it's even more severe in their mind than terrorism, which is really a shock, okay? That's why it says pool, a poll shock. Uh, now, I, I know um, the, when you look at agendas, okay, uh, the Democrats had control of Congress for two years. They had the presidency, the Congress, and the Senate, okay? Nothing was done that I know of. Okay, now was there anything done? Because they had all control. They could have put health care, they could have infrastructure, they could have all their agendas. Okay, what happened in those two years? Well, what they did do is they, they, they jammed uh, Obamacare down the throats of the American people. And it's a problem that still hasn't been, been fixed. Uh, you know, basically, you know, if you remember, um, you know, the lies to the American people, if you like your health care plan, you can keep it. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Uh, if you like your doctor, you can keep him or her. That's not true. And premiums will go down by an average of $2,500. That's not true. Uh, now, this was done without any bipartisan support. Uh, and if you remember, Nancy Pelosi said, well, we, we have to pass it to see what's in it. Uh, you know, here, here we are stuck with this where we're seeing our premiums skyrocket. People now have an insurance card, but they can't afford to use it because they can't pay the, the, the deductible. So you really don't have insurance. And now they're talking about they're going a step further. They're going a step for it further, that they want to, you know, uh, Medicare for all, health care for all. Everybody gets health care, which means that everyone that has insurance paid by their employer, their plan, it's gone. They're going to take it away from you. And, and who believes that the, the government is going to do a better job than you or your spouse in picking your health care plan? Okay, so here's where I, I, I get confused, okay? Uh, I've done over 3,600 shows, and, and I, I feel like I'm dumber today than I was when I first started because I, I can't understand logic sometimes. Um, if you have a bad product, you know, you, you don't buy that product. Now, what the country, when we were doing, you know, we had the last election, we had the largest um, employment, more wage, higher wages, more women working, more Hispanics working, more um, uh, his, um, African Americans were. I mean, it was high. The, the, we're down the lowest we've ever been. Correct me if I'm wrong, okay? So with all this going on, all right, why would then the people decide to give the Democrats majority when they were in, we were in sad shape before that? I mean, I don't understand that, Lou. I, I, don't, I don't believe they will. I believe the majority of the American people you know, they vote their, their, their pocketbooks. They vote, you know, what happens to them around the kitchen table. Uh, the Democrat Party is no longer the Democrat Party that we grew up with. I was a Democrat. 
Um, you know, we were Kennedy Democrats back then. There yeah. were, there's no such thing as a Kennedy Democrat. There's no such thing as a Reagan Democrat. Now it's extreme uh, ideas. Uh, you know, the green, new Green Deal, where we're going to get rid of cars. I mean, we're going to tear down every building in New York because it has glass windows. I mean, these these are these are crazy extreme ideas in the presidential. The, well, this why, party. Is the why does the majority of the American people? When you look at the Democrat Congress, okay, mm -hmm. why why again? You know, I, and I know the media is hiding so much. I mean, they don't report ninety percent of what Trump does. Okay, that's he's successful in, uh, and we'll get to that in, in some point in the show. Why then? You know. Uh, I mentioned on one of my shows, my pro-life shows, okay, and, and all due respect to, 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 to former Pre Vice President Joe Biden, uh, the guy is pro-choice, okay, and, and no matter, you know, what you hear is, oh, he'll win Scranton. Well, well, why will he win Scranton? Because he's a native. Well, that's okay, but what is he? what will he be bringing to the American people? And, and I'm not being sarcastic, but... Why vote for him because he's your neighbor? It doesn't make sense to me. You know, this is the amazing thing, Sam. They, they talk to the people as if they're stupid. They really insult the intelligence of, of the people. Joe Biden left Scranton 1952, 67 years ago. He's been gone from Pennsylvania for 67 years ago. What has he done for Scranton? He's been in Washington for 44 years. Hello. Joe Biden is not, uh, is not a Pennsylvanian. He's not our neighbor in Scranton. He's a D.C. product. 44 years, forgot Pennsylvania, left when he was nine years old, and now he wants to get elected. And we're going to insult the people here and say, well, we're going to vote for him because 67 years ago he... Yeah. And, oh, Never mind that he didn't do anything for us. Yeah, yeah. But but that's enough for us to go in and vote for him. I listened to him when he was a couple of years ago, the Irish uh, Day, uh, what is the St. Patrick's dinner, and he said something about he was responsible for something that they did in Scranton. You know, some kind of river. I don't know what it was. Uh, and I was thinking, well, okay, that's a good thing because if you're there, but Scranton has been in bad shape f for many many years. Now I guess with different things happening and. And I understand, uh, Lou, you know, look, you're from Hazleton. But don't vote for Lou Barletta because he's from Hazleton and he's, he lives down the street from me. It doesn't make any sense to me. The uh, media, all right, I sell advertising, all right? That's how we exist here. Right. Now, what I want is when my advertiser is advertising and they're selling this pen, the people who are going to buy this pen should have a job or else they can't buy the pen. I'm tickled pink that, the, that people are working. Right. So if I was the New York Times or any major, if I had magazines or newspapers, or, or I would be thrilled with the economy and saying, well, but what they're doing is they're kicking the bus driver. Does that make sense? You've been in business. No, but, but here's what happened. He, he exposed them. You know, the media has been getting more and more liberal all the time. They've just been moving further left and further left. And, but nobody could say anything because what would they do to you? Mm -hmm. If you came out against the national media, you had no chance of winning in office. So what did Donald Trump do? He's an outsider. I remember being with a, a, another member, who, a Republican, who was giving the president heck about his tweeting and said, please, stop tweeting, Mr. President. You're hurting the Republican Party with your tweets. And he looked at him and he said, do you know how many people follow me on Twitter? 50 million people. And guess what? The media can't do anything about it. So he found a way to get a message to, to, to the American people, which he can't do through our media, who's, who's supposed to be, they're not supposed to be biased. I never knew growing up whether Walter Cronkite or, you know, those guys, you never knew. They reported the news. Yes. You never knew their political affiliations. Yeah. Yeah. Just pick up the paper and look at the headlines, even here. Yeah. Look at the headlines. I find it, I can't tell you the last time I see a headline that says something positive about Donald Trump. Yeah. Even when he's doing something positive, yeah. they find a way to, to twist it. Did you ever read the Democrat platform <laughs> versus Republican platform? And when, when, you, when you read, the, and I, I always tell the viewers, you know, just Google Democrat platform and read it, okay? And, and when you read that platform, you, you basically scratch your head and say, oh, my God, especially if you're a religious person, okay? Um, and so they hate Trump because he put more people to work. 
They hate Trump because he's trying to protect our country with immigrants, illegal immigrants. Not that he doesn't want immigrants. You've said that from no. day one, okay? In fact, you were a leader in that, all right? And yet, we have the press, we have people who are saying they hate him. I, I don't... I, you know what's amazing, Sam? What? But then they'll sit around their, their, in their boardroom and say, why is our publication down? Why are our radio? Yeah, yeah. Why aren't more people buying our newspapers? Yeah, yeah. They don't get it. Yeah. They get it because people don't trust what they're saying anymore because their bias is yeah. so obvious. Maybe not to them, but to the average person who wanted to get that unbiased news yeah. now sees that I can't even trust what I'm reading or seeing on television. Folks, I'm talking to former Congressman Lou Barletta. I spent a lot of time with the president. Um, it's, um, it's, it's pitiful. It really is. It's, it's, it's so sad. When I, when I see what's going on, and it's not that you don't want to report it, but here it is today in the Drudge Report, a poll. It says, poll shock. Americans view fake news as a bigger problem than terrorism. You know, and, and you wonder if the media will pay attention to this. You know, just, just present the facts. That's all. Just present facts like we're doing today. But people hate Trump because they are pro-choice, and they want to kill unborn babies, and Trump's saying, I'm against that. And their agendas engulf them so much that they develop a hate for this person. We'll be back right after this. Thanks for staying with us, folks. You're watching the Sam LaSanne Show. Remember, 24-7, SSPTV.com. You can watch all of his shows. Now, for those people who do not have cable, which you should, you can tell your friends to um, go to YouTube and just search SSPTV and all our shows and our news on YouTube and of course our app SSP TV, just search it. You can watch it uh, all over the place. Uh, for those people uh, in different areas, we are in Pottsville on channel 190 from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. every day uh, on, um, in the, the Wilkes-Barre uh, Mountaintop uh, Kingston area. We're on Service Electric Cable Communications channel 92 uh, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Saturdays and Sunday evenings and in the Lackawanna County on Com Comcast 190 from 8 to 11 uh, a.m. Saturdays and Sundays, so you can get us there. My guest today is former Congressman Lou Barletta, very close friend with uh, Donald Trump, um, and we're talking about facts. I know some of you staunch Democrats get nervous, but uh, I was a Democrat too, and, and I, I have to applaud my mother, God rest her soul, 87 years old. She switched to becoming a Republican because she said, Sammy, she said, Butchie, I cannot live what, the, what, their, what their, their platform is all about and how they want to kill babies and, and how can you, you know, and my, I would say, Mom, you know, I'm proud of you because I'm still an idiot. I'm still a Democrat registered. Uh, and it's, now, there, we have a lot of good Democrats. Oh, yeah. I mean, John oh, yeah. Jack, yep. I mean, and so I, and they don't, they don't believe in, 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 the, in the platform. We read in the paper, you know, every time, you know, um, um, you, you heard about um, Trump in London, and and there was going to be this massive protest. So the day before this massive protest, if you if you listened to, you heard um, you heard Brian uh, Williams. There's going to be a big protest tomorrow. They're going to tell the 250,000 people, CNN 250,000 people, the big protest, the big protest, the big protest. Nothing happened, but they were gloating the day before. Okay, in fact, if you listen to some people who, um, on, and even one CNN reporter, I'm sure he's going to get fired, said, there's, there's nothing here, okay? So that shows you again how this, this poll says that people are more concerned about fake news than terrorism. So when, when the president's doing all this stuff, we'd never know the true, true stuff. What did you find with, with the tariffs and the immigrants and, and all this other stuff, the, the wall, et cetera? Yeah. So first of all, Sam, I wouldn't worry about that, uh, you know, what the media said yesterday, because that was yesterday. Today, they're looking for something different to complain about and to find wrong with this president. Uh, re remember, his approval rating is now up to 48% with the American people. This is after 90%, over 90% of the coverage is terribly <laughs> negative. Imagine if they told the American people the truth yeah. and the facts. Yeah. So this is what's happening. What I, what, what, what I, I know is uh, this president is doing. Because Congress uh, is fighting him tooth and nail every step of the way, not helping, not working with him at all, it leaves this president, the only option is to try to do this on his own. 
okay? He knows the problem of an open border. He knows the drugs that are coming in. He knows the human trafficking, what's happening. He knows the girls that are being sexually abused and the women who are being sexually abused uh, because of our open borders and that the drug cartel are making millions of dollars and terrorists can get in. He knows all that. So what is Congress, why isn't that enough for Congress to say, we're going to secure the border? He has no choice. Congress won't work with him. So his only option is to go to Mexico and say, listen, they're not coming directly from Mexico. They're coming up from South America, from, from Honduras, Guatemala. Um, you know, you got to stop letting, you know they're coming in your southern border, traveling through Mexico illegally. Mexico wouldn't allow them to come into their country and stay there. You're allowing them to come in illegally into the United States, and this has become a burden on the, on the American people. People are losing their lives through, through you know, whether it's drugs or, or crimes that are being committed. So he, they left him no option to say, well, I've got to force you to secure that border, and you're making a lot of money in trade with us, so we're going to have to do something to get leverage to make you do what you should be doing if you were a good friend of the United States. And that's, he's doing that, the tariffs, because Congress uh, is, is literally allowing this to happen. Now, uh, they are negotiating, in fact, uh, today is June 5th, uh, and they are negotiating, uh, Pompeo is, is mm -hmm. there today uh, um, trying to negotiate what's going on. What do you think is going to happen? I think I think the Mexican government will realize that you know tariffs on their on their goods um, is probably not a good thing for I mean for their economy. I mean Mexico's greatest you know source of income is people remittances back into the uh, into Mexico from the people that are here and and the trade that goes on you know so it's very important to them. Remember that this this is a president whose biggest strength is the art of the deal. He's a negotiator. He's a businessman. We haven't had a businessman who, who understands that. And, you know, he told me something personally, Sam, in, in one of the conversations that we had, you know, in talking to him about, uh, you know, about business. And, and, and uh, you know, he said, let me tell you something. In business, whoever has leverage when you're at a negotiating table is getting a better deal. There's no question. You've got to know that going in. If you have something, if I have something you need or I have something over you, I'm going to get a better deal if I know how to negotiate. We've had people who didn't know how to negotiate before. He knows we have leverage. He's going to get a better deal for the American people, just like he has done with, with the other trade deals, where he's looking at these and saying, well, this wasn't good for the American people. It was good for you, but it wasn't good for our people. So I applaud that we finally have somebody who's willing to be tough, and not cave in. And we, we have been so used to politicians just rolling over, caving in, taking our jobs, taking advantage of the United States. We now have somebody who's standing up. The next election coming up next year, it, it seems like every election is critical. It, it just like gets worse. I mean, every year is, is critical, critical, critical. Um, do you think next year, um, the media won't expose this. I mean, the liberal media won't expose it, but the, the people who, the conservative media will tell you the truth. That majority are saying, uh, at least people with strategic areas of um, information, saying that Trump will be reelected, okay, um, even if, if it's Biden. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I think he's going to win by a bigger margin than he won before because people see the economy. They see, you know, six million more jobs have, have been... Uh, have been added 453,000 new manufacturing jobs. Remember, uh, Obama and Biden lost 160 some thousand manufacturing jobs, and and President Obama said they're they're gone, they're never coming back. And here, here's another st statistic that I think is so important. Under President Obama, 13 million more people went on food stamps. 13 million more people had no other choice but to rely on food stamps to live. Under President Trump. Five million people have come, in off, have come off of food stamps already, are back not needing that, that kind of assistance. They're feeling good about themselves. They're feeling they have a job. Yeah, yeah, they can that's take right. care and of their family. And there's nothing wrong with when you need help. And, and, it's, and here again, he's making people feel good about themselves. You were in, um, when you were, I got a minute left, you, when you were in Congress, when people says, I hate Trump, why do you think people hate Trump? They, they don't like the way he talks, maybe. They don't like his personality. They don't like his boldness. You know, it's, it's something personal. 
that's not what we elect a president for. You know, we don't elect a president for that. We elect a president for what he can do for the American people. And we have, we have felt so helpless for so long, the forgotten American people, where we never really had somebody fighting for the little guy anymore. We're like, we had no voice. It was the elites in Washington, the establishment in Washington, controlling us, telling us what we should do and how we should do it. And, and that has all changed under this millionaire president uh, who, who has made his life standing up for life, standing up for the forgotten American people, standing up to the world and saying, you're not going to take care take advantage of the people anymore. And you, I think that's going to make a difference. Could you imagine if, if uh, this country goes to socialism, which the, I, think, I think the liberal media would like that. I, I, I hope I'm wrong. Are you going to run for office again? Uh, you know, I, I'll never say never. I'm enjoying what I'm doing right now, enjoying mm -hmm. being home with my family, being, being back here again. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to close the door. Um, mm -hmm you know, behind me, because you never know. And you're in constant contact with the White House. I am. Uh, okay. Um, I am. So, uh, all I could say, um, Lou, is, is I'm hoping that people weigh, look at facts. I mean, nothing wrong with, you know, if you feel the, the opponent's best, you know, but when you look at facts, it's, it's, just, it's just sad. But this shock poll today um, goes to tell you, folks, I, you know, if, if any of my products in this, on SSP TV, was not generating um, the public interest in, in, in advertising and I was losing viewers, I wouldn't have the product. But it seems CNN, MSNBC, the New York Times, Washington, all these people that are really ultra liberals don't care about s subscriptions, don't care about advertising, at least what I'm thinking, because their ratings are dropping. It, doesn't, it just doesn't make sense to me as a businessman, but maybe they know something, I don't know, what the heck. I'm only... Uh, uh, a, a talk show host. It, it, just, it just blows my mind how, how they can allow that to happen. Um, uh, remember, you can watch all our shows on uh, our app, SSP TV, uh, or YouTube. Just search SSP TV. We'll see you next time.